The bitter and bloody events unfolding in St. Peter's Field, Manchester, 200 years ago, inspired this big screen version by the veteran British director Mike Lee. Get back. Get back. But what was the Peterloo Massacre all about? 60,000 people came from all the surrounding towns in Manchester to hear Henry Hunt, the big speaker of the day, and local speakers to talk about democracy. They were campaigning for the vote, um, and it was a peaceful demonstration, but then the magistrates and the local authorities sent the cavalry in, read the riot act, and um, killed up to about 18 people, injured up to about 750 more. Lawyers and priests, a motley crowd, to the earth her pale brows bowed. At the John Rylands Library, Manchester, almost on the site of the massacre, Maxine Peake, one of the stars of Mike Lee's film, reads Shelley's epic poem, The Mask of Anarchy, which was inspired by Peter Lou. With a mighty troop around, with their trampling shook the ground, waving each a bloody sword for the service of their lord. Well, this is the Free Trade Hall, and the plaque to Peterloo is up here, if you see that. This is one of the few surviving places that we have of that era. Um, the Friends Meeting House is on the other side, so you would have seen mothers trying to get their children over the wall um, and seek sanctuary. Peterloo is essential for particularly this week where we're talking about parliamentary sovereignty, who has power, what role does the Prime Minister have, all these questions are asked 200 years ago. So the people in 1819 were demanding the vote because hardly anyone in the country had the vote, um, many places were unrepresented, Manchester didn't have MPs, neither did most of the the industrial cities. One man, one vote. Parliamentary representation. Preposterous proposition. In the view of many historians, the bad guys were the great and the good of the Northwest, including magistrates who oversaw what turned out to be the lethal suppression of the protest. Who is this character here? That is Robert? my great great grandfather, Colonel Ray Fletcher. But Newsnight's been speaking to the descendant of one of the worthies who gave the orders. I feel proud, proud of him. Um, I have a sense of awe toward, towards him. Of awe? That, of awe, that he did so much with so little. There were, um, there were some nine magistrates on the, on the committee, and they did their best. It was the lack of skill uh, by the yeomanry troops moving in uh, uh, into the crowd, uh, the horses and possibly the people and possibly the soldiers becoming hysterical and then beginning to lash out with their sword. There was no blame attached to the magistrates um, because the, uh, the Home Secretary realised that the magistrates had done the best they could in very difficult circumstances. And the great thing is that since that massacre, there's been a movement of greater fairness for everyone in the community, and so I'm very pleased that that move has taken place. If you want to join in, please do. Rise like lions after slumber. In Shelley's rousing verses and elsewhere, the Peterloo Massacre is seen as a terrible wrong that led to democratic reform. It continues to resonate two centuries later. Shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep had fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. Thank you. So was Peterloo a turning point in national history or is that overstating things a little? Alison Morgan of Warwick University and Times columnist Daniel Finkelstein are here. Welcome. Um, just picking up on those words from Shelley there, ye are many and they are few for the many, not the few. I mean, is there a direct line, do you think, to the ideology of the Labour Party today? 
absolutely. I mean, the people who were there at St Peter's Field, remember, there were 60,000 of them, none of whom had the vote. They were very much campaigning for their democratic rights, something that a very small proportion of the population had at the time, and not a single MP in Manchester, despite the fact that it had a population of over 150,000. Well, do, do, do you think that's fair, or do you think... Do you... Yes, uh, it's completely fair. This was an important event and worth, worthy of study uh, and worthy of commemoration. And I'm afraid I thought Robert Cornish's point, there, it shows the power of cognitive dissonance, was ridiculous. Obviously, the magistrates were to blame, and he shouldn't, I'm afraid, be proud of that relative or his role. Uh, but there is a question not about whether... Peterloo should have been a turning point, just a question of whether it was. Uh, it was more than 100 years, after all, until we got universal suffrage. Uh, after Peterloo, really, a radical activity peaked. Sidmouth, who was the Home Secretary at the time, remained Home Secretary for five years. The Conservative government uh, remained in power uh, for, for a further eight years and only really came to an end because Liverpool had a stroke. So it, 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 maybe it should have been a turning point. Well, I think it should have been a turning point, but it wasn't. I think there's two points to remember. The first thing about Peterloo is we need to remember it as it is, as a single event. 18 people were killed and more than 650 people injured. They were there as a peaceful demonstration. This was a premeditated attack by the authorities. That in itself warrants us remembering it. And it was, let's not forget, the bloodiest event on English soil in the 19th century, as Robert Poole said in his recent book. We also need to remember it as part of the wider discourse of Labour history, the, our history, the history of democratic rights. It's a very particular point, though, in, in, in the relationship between the ruling class and, and those they're ruling, though, isn't it? Because going back to the Robert Cornish point about the magistrates, the yeomanry mm. were, the, were part of the ruling class, the sons of, 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 of their leading members. There was no police force. Yes. Uh, there was no proportional way for yes. them to... Well, it, indisputably, uh, it teaches lessons. And, you know, one of the things that I always say to other Conservatives is uh, it, Sidmouth's certainty, their certainty about the social order uh, and about the stupidity of progress was completely re was revealed by the fact they thought Henry Hunt was this terrible... Uh, the, the orator whom they were trying to arrest was this terrible individual and all he was doing was promoting universal suffrage, which every uh, political person supports. So it certainly has lessons to teach. The question, though, is whether it belongs uh, in a sort of historical curriculum that would be studied by history students or whether uh, history students at GCSE, or whether it's something that is so important as a turning point in British history, every student needs to have it. And I would just argue it can't bear that weight because it didn't do, it didn't change uh, history. Maybe it changed journalistic history. Uh, it's clearly remembered in great ways. And, and you, you know, as your, as your writing illustrates, it inspired great protest uh, movements and romance as well. And that's important. And I think that is one of the key things is, is the cultural response to Peterloo. So not only do we have a Times journalist was there on the platform. He yes. wrote an eyewitness account. You know, th this was a turning point in terms of journalism, mm -hmm. in terms of the cultural response. We have graphic satire, we have poems, we have songs, we have pottery, we have textiles, all of which is on the side of the reformers. So that in itself, I think, makes it very different to lots of other similar events that were happening, not when people were killed, but certainly when people were demonstrating. Quick point, um, Daniel. The um, loss of life. I think you wrote in your column about this, that this is what distinguished it. But you go back to the Gordon riots in London, 1780, 285 people shot dead by the army. Uh, the cause is surely important. The Gordon riots was an yes. anti-Catholic pogrom. And this was the cause of liberty. It was. And I think, uh, you know, what, one of the things that's important about it is the cause was proven correct. Uh, and it also demonstrated the, the sort of bankruptcy of uh, Liverpool, Sidmouth worldview. And, and I think that does make it significant. But it didn't do what it what is claimed of it. We, British political history was not settled on the streets. It was settled by capitalist development, by the creation of cities, uh, by the liberal reform that's belong, that, that comes along with that. And uh, we romanticise it to say that it was settled in the streets. I disagree with you, Danny. I think everything we have, we have fought for every step of the way in order to achieve full democracy that we have.